And then this vision for New Zealand that we could see more in this country connected, taking up the opportunities of the internet. Uh, tēnā koe, Mr Chair. Thank you for the opportunity to contribute in this committee stage debate of the Telecommunications, Property Access and Other Matters Amendment Bill. Uh, I'd like to commend the Select Committee. Uh, it seems that there was a lot of collaboration and a lot of, um, I guess, brainstorming about what the solutions uh, could be to the issues at hand. And I particularly want to highlight that uh, when uh, additional um, supplementary order papers or amendments were identified, that the Select Committee actually engaged in a second round of consultation with the public to make sure that they got this bill right. And I think they have got it right. And so I just want to talk about a few things that um, have now come to my mind in terms of the relevance of this legislation to not only my community, but other communities around New Zealand. And for me, it was understanding what the government's aspiration was. And so the government originally had a goal of 75% coverage uh, for ultra-fast uh, broadband by 2019, and they've amended that goal. Now they want to provide uh, high-speed broadband connectivity to at least 80% of New Zealanders by 2022. And so that got me thinking, why? Why would the government want to commit over $250 million, or well, $210 million, I think, to this particular uh, priority that they've identified? And the benefits, actually, um, and I've just had a look at some of them to business, which is about faster downloads, apparently three times faster, faster uploads, apparently 10 times faster, increased reliability, uh, also improved information and data flow, high quality video conferencing, cost effective access, lower cost by utilising internet calling services. So overall, this is about enhancing the environment uh, for businesses. So that's fantastic. And then from a personal or home perspective, it was also about allowing people to work from home. So they don't have to go into work, they can actually work from home. Uh, same issues, consistent online video and TV services, uh, lower cost um, telephone and internet calling services. So the net benefit to New Zealanders and to New Zealand is huge. And so I want to acknowledge uh, what this bill is attempting to do. So from my read of it, we've decided that everybody should have access to what I call a platform technology, which is ultra-fast broadband. And so I think uh, there is collaboration across the House because all of us want access to that technology. And in fact, myself and in my uh, own home situation, took me over a year <laughs> working with my uh, six other um, shared driveway homeowners to actually have access to ultra-fast broadband. It took a, a long time, it took a lot of uh, collaboration, it took a lot of uh, working with parliamentary service and chorus, so the relevance of this legislation in my life I've, I have experienced. And so I'm hoping through uh, the authorisation of land access, access in instances where the consent of more than one party is required will be addressed in this bill so that if people want to connect uh, they're not then dependent on others who may not want to connect or may not want to connect at that point in time. And that's kind of then led me to think about uh, having access to this platform technology, being able to utilise it. And I guess this is my challenge uh, to the government in terms of providing access. Because the assumption is people have the devices, either at home or at work or at school, to be able to use the technology. And one of the really interesting things that I've found is that um, the New Zealand Council of Education Research in May 2016 produced a report, and it was actually about schools' access to devices that enable them to use this platform technology. So if you're uh, from a low decile school, the access is through devices that the schools provide, and they're shared. But if you come from a high decile school, 66% of decile 9 and 10 schools have what they call bring your own device policies. So it's, an, it's actually an expectation of the school, given they have access to the technology through uh, the Network for Learning, uh, which provides state-funded broadband to 2,500 schools. So the government is really committed to this technology, which is why they've contracted Network for Learning to provide this technology at schools. But I'm bringing this up as an issue because I think it is an issue for the future 
So if you're in a decile 9 and 10 school, 66% uh, of those schools have these bring your own device policies, which then assumes, Mr Chair, Thank you, Mr Chair. That the parents are going to be able to provide these devices to the kids. Why? Well, at the why I've outlined. It's all those benefits about access to information, data, I guess interfacing with data, especially for our young people where they're doing research projects, and actually um, having the knowledge to engage with the world that then provides them with better learning environments and hopefully better learning outcomes. Uh, but one of the interesting things that's just happened uh, was um, I noted that Katrina Casey, who works for the Ministry of Education, has said that these BYOD uh, policies actually break our Education Act, because our Education Act says that education should be free. And so if, we're, if some of the schools are wanting uh, to have these BYOD policies and the Ministry of Education is saying, well, you can't, because education is supposed to be free and requiring parents to provide these devices to their kids breaks the Education Act, then I guess that's my wedding or my challenge back to the government. Because I think it's incumbent on all of us then to provide access to these devices to all of our children. And I know at Manurio High School, it's a decile 1C school, and some would say, you know, our community don't have uh, the, the capability to buy these devices. Well, actually, our school has prioritised that our children will have access to these devices. Because in the world we live now, if our children cannot access the, these devices, if they don't uh, have the full range of um, devices available to them within an education context, then they will never fulfil their potential and they won't be fit for purpose in this modern world. So my challenge now back to the government is if we're now saying that requiring schools uh, to drop their BYOD policies um, because education is free in New Zealand, then my challenge back to the government is then they must provide those devices to all of our kids so that they can actually benefit from what is a priority, uh, not only for the government, but I think all political parties across the House. And I bring it up in this debate because it seems, you know, this, we've come from uh, a, a situation where in 2001 we completely overhauled this telecommunications area. This was about providing efficient and effective regulation of telecommunications. And so if we're going to create an environment where we spend over $210 million to create a technology platform, then we actually have an obligation, I believe, based on that investment, to ensure that every child in this country has access to the devices that are going to enable them to utilise ultra-fast broadband. Um, it would be interesting what the Minister thinks about that. It's not a component of this bill, but I, I think, given the Ministry of Education's position, uh, the government does need to respond to this. Uh, the reason that Manurewa High School yeah, decided now. to have a BYOD, am I getting to, uh, sorry, yeah, policy was right. because, as I said before, they recognise how important uh, ultra-fast broadband is. And in fact, my three high schools, Manurewa High, James Cook High and Alfriston, want to link their, um, their uh, access to uh, state-funded broadband together so that my whole community can have free Wi-Fi because they want the kids not only to be able to, to use their devices at school, where they can connect, they want, them to be able to use, they want them to use these devices at home. And so I think, um, given the intention of this bill, given the work that the Select Committee has done, given that this seems to be an area that, across the House, we all recognise is incredibly important to the future of our country, because this is about regional economic development. This is about equality of opportunity for all of our children. No matter where you live, no matter um, what school you go to, if your school was able to connect and you were able to, through having a device, either at school or that you own yourself, uh, engage in and with the world, I think that we're going to get better learning outcomes for our children. So from my perspective, uh, as a member of the House, but as a <coughs> member that wasn't on the Commerce Select Committee, uh, I think this is an incredibly important piece of legislation. And so I more than stand in support of it, I actually am opening us up to what is the next phase in the evolution of providing this platform technology to all New Zealanders, and specifically from my perspective, uh, young people, 
who through this device or through this technology uh, can achieve wonderful things. Thank you, Mr Chair. Claire Curran. <laughs> Thank you, Mr Chair. Um, well, I think um, the member Lewis...